these cheap China pedals, do they actually work? Are they the clone they said to be? Or are they just a waste of your time and money? Stay tuned to find out. you just watched is me and my buddy Eric jamming out in the open mic jam in Crazy Elephant and the bassist is David and our drummer is Dariel all the way from USA. If you're confused, Crazy Elephant is actually located in Singapore. Before we continue with the rest of the video, I need your help to click on the subscribe button as this is, I mean you know YouTube, this is the only way that my channel can grow and I can churn out more great contents like this for you. Back in 2004, Keith Von Hull just like any kids on the block, wanted an expensive pedal, but instead he set out to build his own clone. And that resulted in him starting his own company, Build Your Own Clone. And forums are filled with schematics suddenly, and everyone wants to build their own replica of a famous pedal. Everyone started buying soldering irons, components, and became an electronic expert. I myself was a victim of that. I built a booster pedal, out of a wooden enclosure I cuffed on my own. And then all of a sudden, Steve Vai showed up with a new pedal, the Boss DS1, but with modification from Robert Kelly. It's called a Sing I Mon. Somehow, I followed the trend as well, and I found schematics online to modify my own DS1. And of course, if you're wondering if my modified DS1 is any better than the original DS1, well, there is a reason why it's sitting up there. So I guess the reason why people are always in favor of modifying their own pedal or building their own clone is simply because of the cost. A good distortion pedal like, for example, this Friedman BEOD will set you back $199.99. Comparing that to a DS1 which sells for $49.99, well, I think it's more sensible to buy a DS1 and modifying it to sound like a expensive boutique pedal. Well, that is until the recent and sudden invasion from China with loads of pedals that are so cheap and they claim to be the clone of your favorite pedals. If you do a quick YouTube search, you'll find there are many comparison videos and review videos that shows you how all these China pedals stands next to the original and usually people are very very pleased with the clones. For example, the clone, if you do a quick search, sets you back about $1,999 to $3,000. Whereas this copy here I have by Moski or Moskai, it's only gonna set you back around $20 to $30 shipping included. That is like 10% of the original pedal if you are not realizing it. And it is still at least 50% cheaper than any other brands that clone the clone pedal. Clone the clone pedal. <laughs> and these China companies do not stop at making clone pedals, they actually keep up with the modern guitar technology. This I'm holding here is a MOA radar, which says here as the speaker cap simulator. And it's not your regular analog cap sim which you can find in many brands, this actually house your IR. And if you're familiar with Pete Thorne and Sir Guitar, you'll be familiar that IR technology is set to take over the whole guitar industry. This mini pedal stores all my favorite IR and I'm using this in gigs and recording these days. You can check out a video I made that talks about how I set up my home studio and hopefully you benefit from it. But do they actually work? Maybe it will break down in time. They probably use cheap component that is not comparable to the superior American pedal. Maybe all you need to do is to pay a little bit more to upgrade from these China pedals to something really decent. You know what? Actually, they work. Hear me out. If you understand the basic of manufacturing and marketing, you'll understand that how China is able to produce all this pedal at such a low price. 
China itself is a big country and there are indeed many emerging bands and many famous bands. And when you have a guitar industry, it is the whole cycle of what happened in 2004 all over again. Now, since most of the components that sits in your pedal are made in China, it is very easy for them to make a similar pedal at a fraction of a price. And because their market is big, they naturally are able to drive the price down due to supply and demand. And let's not forget, they actually ship this all over the world, not just to China. Now imagine you are a pedal maker and you need a range of electronic products that's found cheaper in China. The only difference that you have compared to the China maker is that you need to cross the Pacific Ocean. Well, and let's not forget about duties and taxes. Well, in short, to me, the China pedals are indeed as good as the American counterpart. And not to mention, sometimes big and reputable companies make pedals that we don't really want. In the end, we fall back to the same old routine of buying, trying, and then selling pedals that we don't like in this big circle of life thingy. <laughs> One thing for sure, I'll not be stopping at just three of these China pedals because the range they're offering is insane. Perhaps enough of talking, I'll show you a quick demo of how these China pedals are actually good enough. Finally done with the video. Hope you like this episode, learned something from it, and please remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm Vinny. See you next time. Bye.